Hello, I'm John Manning, the Founder and Managing Director of PricingProfits.com and welcome to this second episode of 10 Things. Over the Christmas New Year period, I got contacted by a freelance journalist in New York who's writing a book on a pricing related topic. He wanted to talk to me about, amongst other things, the history of pricing, having seen in a letter to the editor I had published in The Economist about six years ago. So I thought I would turn that discussion into this second episode of 10 Things. So here we go, 10 Historical Pricing Milestones. Number 10, auctions. Auctions date back to about 500 BC. It's when the first evidence of them exists. Joseph, with his coat of many colours, was actually sold into slavery by his brothers via an auction. And auctions have stood the test of time and we're used to seeing tens of thousands of fresh flowers auctioned every day in Holland as well as thousands of keywords auctioned on Google. Opportunistic pricing is number nine. In 1666, boatmen charged Londoners fleeing the Great Fire of London two to three times the normal fare to cross to safety on the other side of the Thames River. This is one of the earliest links between price and demand that I can find and the practice continues today. On the 8th of January this year, the New York Times did a story on a passenger paying six to seven times the normal rate for a taxi provided on New Year's Eve by a company called Uber.com. Number eight, dynamic pricing at the gallows. At the same time as the Great Fire of London, prices for grandstand seats to watch a hanging at Tyburn, also in London, started to rise and fall according to the level of interest in the execution. Again, this provides some historical precedent to where touring bands such as the Eagles and the Rolling Stones got the idea from. More recently, many of the American Major League Baseball teams this season have launched dynamic pricing, where prices vary according to the day of the week, whether it's a home or away game, who the opposition is, and even the players selected in the team. The advanced purchase of tickets comes in at number seven. In 1729, the British Museum in London started selling admission tickets in advance. Many industries, including most, if not all of the travel industry, including airlines, car rentals, hotels, and cruise lines, still do this today. Number six, complaining about prices. Customers have been complaining about prices for years. In 1762, as this sketching from the Times shows, there was a riot at the Covent Garden Theatre in London where the practice of selling tickets to the last two acts of a play at half price was abolished. Of course, this event piles into insignificance when compared to bigger riots that had been attributed to pricing. The origins of the French Revolution, for example, can be traced back to a rise in the price of bread. Number five, price tags arrive in Europe. Between 1869 and 1872, the Bon Marché department store in Paris made two groundbreaking innovations. First, it started to display its wares for customers to inspect, and secondly, it introduced price tags, so no longer was the price determined by the customer's ability to haggle. In 1872, price tags crossed the Atlantic. They were popularised there by Aaron Montgomery Ward, shown here on the left, and recognised as the inventor of the mail order, and Frank Woolworth, who operated a chain of discount stores with all merchandise priced at either 5 or 10 cents. Ward's mail order catalogue still had one problem. Customers had to wait for their purchase to arrive, usually by train. The following decade, in 1888, Thomas Adams put the chewing gum he had invented into Tutti Frutti gum vending machines, which started to appear on New York railway stations. Even today, it's impossible to haggle over price with a vending machine, although attempts have been made by vending machines to haggle with customers. In 1999, the chairman of Coca-Cola, Douglas Ivester, told a Brazilian magazine his company was working on a temperature-sensitive vending machine that would increase the price of Coke on a hot day. The idea didn't get off the ground, but there are temperature sensitive vending machines on the streets of Japan today. Number nine, the arbitrage pricing model. Between 1894 and 1910, a Hungarian immigrant to New York by the name of Joseph LeBang 
identified an opportunity to sell discounted tickets to Broadway shows from his cigar store on 6th Avenue and 30th Street. Receiving free tickets from Broadway agents in return for putting up posters to the shows in his store, LeBlanc then sent his brother out to other stores to buy, as cheaply as possible, the free tickets offered to other store owners. Reselling the tickets at half price, he went to his grave a millionaire. And at number one, price erosion over the product life cycle. The Model T Ford sold for around $850 to $950 when it came out in 1909, but by 1924 the vehicle's price had fallen to around about $260, $295. Ironically, the same thing happens today. The world moves a lot faster and product life cycles are getting shorter and shorter. Today's premium priced products can be tomorrow's dirt cheap commodity. So there you have it, 10 historical pricing milestones, and I'm sure I've only scratched the surface there. So if you know of others, please feel free to contact me and share them with me. I look forward to seeing you for episode of 3 of 10 Things soon.